Okay. The next speaker uh, is the Dr. Yuichi Takemasa from Kajima Technical Research Institute. It's okay for you yeah, to start? Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, my name is Yuichi Takemasa, uh, I'm, and I'm from Kajima Technical Research Institute. I stayed in Singapore uh, since 2000. Oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah, thank you. My name is Yuichi Sakemasa. Uh, I'm from Te Kajima Technical Research Institute. I stayed in Singapore for about uh, nine years uh, at the, our Singapore office of uh, Kajima Technical Research Institute. And I was I came back from Singapore to Japan last uh, August as the deputy director of Kajima Technical Research Institute in charge of global expansion and global activities. Uh, today, I am very happy to have a chance to talk about Yes, I, I, I'm happy to talk. Uh, have a chance to talk about uh, measurement for exterior wall air tightness of a high-rise building uh, using stack effect and individual air conditioning and outdoor air entering through entrance doors. And I ho I hope I can provide uh, uh, other ideas of how we measure uh, air tightness of exterior walls of high-rise building. Okay, th this is the contents of my presentation. Can you hear me? Mm, okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to explain backgrounds and objectives. A sync Simple test method of air tightness. Uh, okay, the, a simple test method of air tightness that uses buoyancy caused by stack effect in a high rise building was uh, developed in 1980s in Japan. And when doors are open near the ground floor or the rooftop, uh, it is the same as uh, pressurizing or depressurizing the building with a blower. So in that case, the amount of airflow in and out of an open door or window at this time uh, corresponds to the amount of air supplied and exhausted by the blower. Based on these results, the equations of, for the inflow and outflow volume at uh, the exterior walls can be formulated. Uh, to estimate the air tightness of the exterior walls. And through the activities of technical committees of uh, Architecture Institute of Japan, or AIJ, uh, we calculated the amount of air leakage at the exterior walls of three model buildings, low-rise, middle-rise, and high-rise buildings, and developed equation that can manually calculate an infiltration rate. We also developed a method to measure the air tightness of the exterior walls on the reference floor uh, using individual air conditioning system for each floor, which began to be widely used in uh, 2000. And this method is introduced and the measurement results are discussed in this presentation. And we also uh, report the measurement uh, results for outdoor air volumes entering through entrance doors and resulting heating loads in the high-rise building in winter, considering large impact of stack effect. And uh, at first, I'm going to talk about a simple test method of air tightness using buoyancy caused by the stack, stack effect in high-rise building. We developed a new method to measure wall air tightness using buoyancy by stack, stack effect in middle-rise and high-rise buildings. The right-hand side uh, of this uh, slide uh, shows the schematic of vertical pressure difference distribution between the inside and the outside uh, in a building in the winter. Uh, generally speaking, because of the stack effect uh, in the winter, the outdoor air goes in 
from the lower part of the building, and the indoor air goes out from the upper upper part of the building, and the vertical pressure can be represented by the linear distribution. Uh, this vertical linear distribution moves parallelly uh, to the right hand side or to left hand side if we change the open and closed status of the doors or windows at the bottom or the top of the building. We use this uh, phenom uh, physical phenomenon to measure the air, air tightness of the exterior wall. And this is the, the, this is the equation uh, expressing the relationship between the measured inside outside pressure difference, delta P, and the amount of air volumes goes in through exterior walls of the ground floor and the standard floors, uh, which are, are shown by Q. And this is the equation uh, show, showing the relationship between the measured and measured inside and outside pressure difference, delta P, and the amount of air volume goes going out through the exterior walls of standard floors and the top floor. And since the total amount of the air going in and going out are the same, and the pressure differences of each floor can be measured by measurement, we can get this equation uh, with the air tightness of exterior walls of, at three locations uh, being unknown parameters. And we generate uh, three equations uh, expressing the relationship between the measured inside outside pressure difference and the amount of air volumes infiltrated through the exterior walls for three conditions by changing the opening status of doors, windows on top and ground floors, etc. And air tightness of exterior walls on top floor, uh, alpha. A R shown here, and the standard floors alpha A T and the ground floors alpha A G are calculated by solving uh, the three simultaneous simulations uh, in uh, three unknowns. And here alpha A stands for equivalent opening areas. Uh, uh, the unit is like uh, uh, square uh, centimeters by uh, square meters. Uh, in this presentation, I'd like to show uh, measurement air tightness of exterior walls for three buildings, a middle rise building, high rise building, and super high rise building. And the first example is building A, uh, which is a middle rise office building of nine floors with reinforced concrete structure. And this slide shows a photo and the plan uh, for the typical floor of building A. And this is the measurement uh, result for building A. You can see three different vertical uh, pressure difference distributions between the inside and the outside. Uh, by changing the opening status of the first floor and the second floor, uh, first floor door and the second floor window. And this line shows the normal status uh, where all the doors were closed. And by solving simultaneous, uh, simulate, simultaneous linear equations in three unknowns, we can obtain air tightness of, or equivalent opening area of standard uh, floors, uh, alpha T shown here. And this is the process of calculating the air tightness of building A. You can get measured, uh, measured pressure difference values by measurement as shown in the red box here. So you can get various coefficients uh, K by solving simultaneous linear equation in three unknowns, we can get the air tightness or equivalent opening area of ground floor, standard floor and the top floor. The second example is building B, uh, which is a high rise office uh, building of 19 floors with a steel structure and precast concrete cutting wall. This slide shows the photo and the plan uh, for the typical floor of the building B. And this is the measurement results uh, for building B. 
again, you can see three uh, kinds of vertical pressure difference distribution between the inside and outside by changing the opening area of the top four uh, doors. By solving uh, these simultaneous uh, linear equations in three unknowns, we can get a tightness or equivalent opening area of a standard floors alpha AT. The third example is uh, building C, uh, which is a super high rise office building of 55 floors with steel structure and metal curtain walls. Uh, this slide shows the photo and the plan for the typical floor of building C. And this is uh, the measurement result for uh, building C. Again, uh, you can see uh, three types of vertical pressure difference uh, distributions uh, between the inside and outside by changing the opening area of top floor doors. By solving simultaneous uh, linear equation in three unknowns, we can get the air tightness or equivalent opening area of a standard floor, alpha AT. And this uh, slide summarizes the measurement result of air tightness of exterior walls. Uh, based on the measurement uh, for the eighth floor, uh, RC structure building, which is uh, is not explained in this presentation, and the ninth floor RC uh, structure building, the equivalent opening area of exterior was around uh, 0 0.5 to 0 0.8 uh, square centimeters per square meters, and which means uh, the exterior walls are tight for buildings with reinforced uh, concrete structure. And based on the measurement for the 90, uh, 55 floor building with steel structure and metal cutting walls, uh, the equivalent opening area of exterior walls are 1.5 centi square centimeters per uh, square meters, which means the exterior walls are uh, average for buildings with steel structure and metal cutting walls. And based on the measurement uh, for the 17th floor, a building with steel structure and precast concrete curtain wall, uh, the equivalent opening area of exterior walls are uh, 2.8 uh, square centimeters per square meters, which means uh, the exterior walls are uh, loose for building with steel structure uh, with a con uh, precast concrete. And this slide shows the categories of air tightness of exterior walls. Based on the measurement, uh, air tightness of exterior walls are uh, categorized uh, as shown here. Uh, casting place uh, RC is categorized as a tight or average. And metal cutting wall is categorized as average or loose. And precast concrete cutting wall is categorized as loose. Uh, here, tight means the equivalent opening areas of around 0 0.5, uh, and uh, uh, average uh, means the equivalent open area of around 1.0 uh, square meters, uh, centimeters per uh, uh, square meters. And loose means around 2.0 uh, square centimeters by uh, uh, square meters or larger. And the next topic is a guideline for uh, amount of air leakage of XA wall made by Architecture Institute of Japan or AIJ. And in this study, we calculated the amount of air leakage at the XA walls of three model buildings using the uh, measurement result or air tightness I just explained and by changing various parameters. We calculated the amount of uh, air leakage at the XA walls for these three model buildings. The first, first is building A, uh, which is a, a low rise building. The second is uh, uh, building B, which is a middle rise building. The third is building C, uh, which is a, a high rise building. And this slide shows the wind velocity setting for simulations. A uh, vertical wind profile was assumed for these three model buildings. Uh, there is also a case with no wind. The right-hand side shows the vertical scale of the model building. 
And the height of the building C is, for example, 110 meters. And this slide shows the example of the airflow network model, which uh, was used for calculation uh, for building C. The left hand side shows the airflow network model for building C, and the right hand uh, shows the calculated result of air movement in building C when there is no wind. This figure shows the uh, air change rate by infiltr infiltration uh, through exterior wall of standard floors. Infil infiltration through exterior walls for standard floor was evaluated by uh, simulation. In this figure, horizontal axis uh, shows building height, and vertical axis shows air, air change rate by infiltration. The average value for infil infiltration through exterior walls of standard floors is around 0.2 times per hour for loose walls and 0.1 times hour per, uh, for tight walls. The influence of building height is not so large according to this uh, calculation result. The second floor is an entrance floor. So infiltration rate through second floor exterior wall is higher than that for standard floors. The results were summarized at the guideline for calculating cooling and heating laws of a society of the heating, air conditioning, and sanitary engineer of Japan or Shase. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about the method to measure the air tightness of exterior walls using individual air conditioning system, another method. Uh, we developed a method to measure the air tightness of the exterior walls uh, on a reference floor using individual air conditioning systems for each floor, uh, which began to be uh, widely used in 2000. And this is the outline uh, of the measured high rise building. Uh, different floors are uh, 14th and uh, 15th floor, as you can see in this slide. And these stories are connected through the two-story atrium called the office garden uh, located in the center of this building. And we used eight major uh, measurement points to measure pressure difference uh, between the inside and outside. And this is the outline of the pressurization system using individual air conditioning systems. Pressurized air volume Q and pressure difference delta P were measured by changing Q by controlling the air conditioning systems. Uh, here, uh, pressure difference between the measurement floors and the upper floors and the lower floors were controlled to be nearly zero. And this is the results of the measurement. And this slide shows the relationship between pressure difference and the air infiltration volume. The results are, are equivalent uh, to the air tightness of exterior walls about uh, 1.25 to 1.67 uh, square centimeters per square meters, uh, which means the exterior walls of this building has average air tightness. And uh, lastly, uh, I'm going to explain measurement in high-rise building for outdoor air volumes and heating loads through entrance doors uh, in the winter. And I'd like to explain the outline of the measurement. We measured outdoor air volumes and heating loads through entrance doors in a high rise building in the winter. The building has 37 stories, and the building is uh, 147 meters high. Uh, we compare the case when both automatic and revolving doors are normally operated, and the case when we always use automatic doors. And opening status of doors, pressure differences at the entrance doors were measured. Uh, this is the plan for the first floor and the second floors. Uh, there are many doors on the first floor and the second floors. The blue rectangular uh, shows an automatic door and the red rectangular shows a revolving door. And this is a measurement result for opening ratios for each entrance uh, door. 
Opening ratios for entrance doors were measured uh, using door sensors. By always using automatic doors, uh, the opening ratios became very large compared to the normally operated uh, case. And this slide shows measured pressure difference and air velocity at the entrance doors. Measured pressure difference at the entrance door can be converted to air velocity at the entrance door using Bernoulli equation. And this slide shows accumulated daily outdoor air volume and heating load through entrance doors. As you can see, uh, accumulated outdoor air volume through entrance doors became large when automatic uh, doors were used for a long time. Uh, this demonstrates uh, that uh, revolving doors were effective uh, to reduce heating loads in, in the winter. I'd like to conclude my uh, presentation. A measurement method where tightness that use buoyancy cause a stack effect in a high-rise building was introduced. And based on the measurement, uh, air tightness of different types of exterior walls were analyzed and categorized. And we calculated the amount of air leakage at the exterior walls of three build model buildings, uh, low-rise, middle-rise, and high-rise buildings. And the results were summarized as a guideline for calculating cooling and heating loads of chassis. Another method to measure the air tightness of exterior walls using individual air conditioning system for each floor was also introduced, and the measurement results were discussed. And considering the large impact of a stack effect, uh, measurement results for outdoor air volumes entering through enter en entrance doors and the resulting heat loads in the high rise building in the winter were also discussed. And the air volume infiltrated through the entrance doors in high rise building is very large, especially in winter. And it's important to make the lower part of the building airtight to reduce heating loads caused by air uh, entering through the ent uh, entrance uh, doors. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. And uh, any question or comment? Uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, my question is a simple one. I would like to learn more about the first test procedure oh, okay. that you're explaining mm. that uses the mm. stack effect in the building. Mm. Mm. So um, if you have reports yeah, I have or something you can share. I have a paper. That would be so fantastic. maybe I, I can share the paper with you. Thank you very much. That would be great. Mm -hmm. So I I I think you 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 said that stack effect is an obstacle to measure the air tightness of a building, but this method utilizes a stack effect actively <laughs> and a different idea. Okay, please. I also have a question about that method. In that method, I would imagine that your calculation procedure involves measuring the area of the openings that you are intentionally making. Yeah. Because without that, I would expect you could only compare the air tightness of the ground floor to the middle floor mm -hmm. to the upper floor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that is that a true statement? Do you use the measured area of the yeah, of the doors? We think that standard uh, for the standard floors, air tightness is uh, somewhere. Uh, it's not so different floor to floor. So we assume the same air tightness for the standard floors. But for the bottom of the, of, of the building and the top of the building, we can guess that the air tightness is different from uh, standard floors. So we assume the unknown for standard floors and the top, uh, bottom of the floor, uh, bottom of the building and top of the building. That's all. Really that makes sense to me. When you open the door, mm. Do you measure the size of the opening? Yes. And uh, 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 air velocity. 
going through. Excellent. The so, so you're using so, that so, as so a flow. We estimate the, the air volumes. And that is like Perfect. using blower. Uh, I mean, pressurization or uh, this depressurization. De de so we don't use a mechanical blower, but we use the stack effect and uh, uh, changing the status of the open, op open state over or closed status of doors as a blower. Sometimes Thank you. Blower. That makes total sense. <laughs> One more question. That complex airflow network model that uh, you showed, is that a custom model that you developed or is it Contam or something else that's yeah, uh, it's it's, uh, it's actually the, developed by ourselves, but then the theory is uh, not very special. So the the airflow network network model we use is not special. So you can get uh, that uh, uh, simulation uh, program uh, commercially. Thank you. Mm. Okay, about it, yes. Yeah, I'll talk about the first method of CS. That's great. I think that's a very interesting one and uh, that's uh, very smart. But uh, my question is, uh, what is the, the opening area compared to the total leakage area that mm. you calculate? Mm. Because you gave us the area uh, per square meter of the uh, envelope. It's, uh, it's always difficult to, <laughs> so, to understand. Yeah. Mm. What, no, but what is the opening area of the door that you open mm. at the bottom? compared to the total leakage area? Is it the same order of magnitude, less or more? Yeah, so 1.0 square centimeters per square meter means uh, the opening area is one ten thousand. You mean, you know, so if you uh, think about one meter, one meter, extable, the uh, area, Substantial opening areas, one, one centimeter, one centimeter. That makes it. Yeah, so. yeah. Mm. And what is the total? If you multiply, what is the total envelope area mm. of your building? Just compare, to have, compare, compare to the opening. Uh, the, compared to the opening you open yeah. to make the measurement. Uh -huh. I have to calculate that because uh, probably the it's not so different there. Uh, in terms of order, yeah, but but uh, it depends on the building, of course. Yeah, and uh, of course, in the, in the in the bottom part uh, part of the building, the opening area is much larger. Yeah, like the entrance of the commercial building, the opening area by doors should be larger than the uh, total uh, substantial opening area for the exterior walls. Yeah, because the uncertainty of your method will depend on the relative side of the opening you have at the bottom and at the top. Uh, but uh, we, we, we uh, made a measurement when uh, the building is not used. That means in the midnight. So basically, the doors are all closed. And we intentionally open the door yeah. okay. and change the, uh, okay, the uh, airflow uh, through the doors intentionally. Yeah, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the uh, opening, the ratio of the opening door, uh, opening uh, areas for the doors is not so important for this measurement. Mm. Because uh, the basic uh, case is uh, the case where the, all the doors are closed. Maybe okay, we, we, we can continue the discussion <laughs> after the whole presentation. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll have a quick break for 30 minutes. Okay, direct to 11.10 around so. Okay, thank you very much.